So did you ever wonder when Joseph Smith Jr. officially abdicated the office of prophet in favor of his brother Hiram Smith? Let me say that again. Joseph Smith abdicated the, his church position as prophet in 1843 and handed over the position of prophet to Hiram Smith, who at the time of the Smith's death in 1844, Hiram Smith was the prophet, the complete and total prophet, of the Mormon Church at Nauvoo. Joseph Smith had abdicated all of his priestly positions in favor of just simply holding the priesthood as a priest to the Almighty God. Well, this occurred on July 16, 1843, after Joseph Smith had been kidnapped into Cincinnati and almost taken into Missouri to stand trial and execution by Governor Boggs. Well, Joseph Smith obviously saw the writing on the wall and just three days prior to this conference talk in which he abdicates office of prophet to his brother Hiram Smith, he deeds over all his property to Emma Smith. So, on April 12, 1843, all the property held by Joseph Smith is deeded over to Emma Smith. And then in, on July 16th, he, Joseph Smith abdicates the office of prophet to his brother Hiram Smith, who's already president and uh, patriarch of the church. But now Hiram Smith holds all three offices. Did you ever hear that? I've never heard this, but here it is documented right in the history on the Joseph Smith website, Joseph Smith Papers website. So it states here, Joseph Smith, this is only 16 days after he has been kidnapped and returned to Nauvoo. Quite an undertaking. I mean, he had been kidnapped, put in jail, and basically was roughed up and taken into Cincinnati. Now, who also happened to be in Cincinnati at the time? Well, yes, Brigham Young and Willard, Wilford Woodruff also just happened to be in Cincinnati. I won't go on and make any innuendo about why Brigham Young always seems to show up at just opportune times when Joseph Smith is being either prosecuted or assassinated. Oh, you forced me. I'm going to give you my theory why Wilford Woodruff and Brigham Young are in Cincinnati. Well, it is later revealed by Will, by uh, Willard Richards that they were that he was sending with Brigham Young a letter of introduction to John C. Bennett, Joseph Smith's arch enemy, who had already written an expose against the Mormon people and was responsible for reigniting these charges in Missouri against Joseph Smith and from which Joseph Smith just escaped. So here we have Brigham Young and Wilford Woodruff with a letter of introduction to John C. Bennett in Cincinnati after Joseph Smith was kidnapped to Cincinnati and just rescued back to Nauvoo. Well, then also who else is in Cincinnati and a favorite of John C. Bennett? It's Sidney Rigdon. All of them show up after the Smith's assassination and claim. Brigham Young claims to be the rightful heir to the Mormon Church in Nauvoo, as does Sidney Rigdon and John C. Bennett. Cincinnati, from Cincinnati, they claim to be the rightful heir. So I no longer claim this is a theory. This is an actual conspiracy. Wilford excuse me, Willard Richard later on in this document st tells, sends Brigham Young a letter of introduction to General John C. Bennett. Je he calls him General Bennett. The only Bennett I know that's a general is John C. Bennett. Favorite companion to Sidney Rigdon, also an imposter and traitor to Joseph Smith. So, 
I mean, come on. This is this theory of the Quorum of the Twelve and Sidney Rigdon and John C. Bennett and the laws and everyone claiming that Joseph Smith practiced polygamy, all of them practicing polygamy and all of them traitors and all of them have a hand in the assassination of the Smith brothers. This is no longer going to be a theory. It is actual fact based on these documents. So let's go on here. April 16th, 1843, a Sunday. Preach the morning and evening on the stand in the grove in the West Temple concerning a man's foes being in his own household. The same spirit that crucified Jesus Christ resides in the breasts of some of those who profess to be saints in Nauvoo. I have a secret enemy, says Joseph Smith at to all of Nauvoo, intermingling with the saints. Said I would no longer prophesy. Let's say this again. Joseph Smith says, I would no I would not prophesy any more, and propose Hiram Smith to hold the office of prophet to the church, as it is his birthright. I am going to have a reformation and the saints must regard Hiram for he is the authority that I might only be a priest to the most high God and slightly touched upon the subject of the everlasting covenant showing that a man and his wife that's a man and a wife already married must enter into the covenant in this world or they have no claim to each other in the second now remember the everlasting covenant as far as Hiram Smith states later on in many talks it means that you can ha only have one wife at a time during this life. You cannot be married to more than one living wife. And on the 16th who is absent and cannot hear the passing of the office of prophet to um, Hiram Smith? Well, it's elders Brigham Young and Wilford Woodruff who were preaching at the house of Father Hewitt in Cincinnati. Afterwards, they went into Kentucky to attend the appointment of uh, the appointment at the Lacking Branch. Elders Woodruff and George Smith afflicted with the influences politically called the Tyler Gripe. Yes, that's Tyler too, and Kip Tippy Canoe, and Tyler was a pro-slaver, and you know the Nauvoo's were Nauvoo residents were anti-slavery, as was hopefully most of Illinois, except for Northern Illinois, was pro-slavery. Then on the 17th, mostly spent conversing with my brother Hiram about the priesthood. Of course, he is because he's passing the passing the mantle of the office of prophet to Hiram Smith. Now, did you ever hear that? Well, yes, it was later confirmed because later on in this same document, Hiram Smith sends greetings to the British uh, saints in the name of the prophet himself. Now again, uh, Joseph Smith abdicated the prophet, the office of prophet, deeded all his property over to Emma in anticipation of being hunted down and arrested for uh, and taken into Missouri to stand trial. It says here again, this is going to be uh, July 19th. So have you ever heard that Joseph Smith in July 16th 1843 abdicated the office of prophet to the church to his brother Hiram who became the prophet of the entire church. No, you haven't heard of it, but as you know, the church office has been reviewing these documents and they try and do damage control by referring to the fact that Hiram Smith became a prophet during this period of time, but they gloss over it and say, oh, but they were both, Joseph Smith and Hiram Smith were both prophets. No, this is not what this document says. Joseph Smith abdicated, gave the, over the office of prophet to Hiram Smith. He claimed no more to have the authority to receive revelation from the Lord on behalf of the church. This is very clear. 
because Joseph Smith is anticipating fleeing permanently from Nauvoo because he knows that he is being hunted down for execution in Missouri and he wants to leave the state as quickly as possible. Hence, he deeded over all his property to Emma and he passed over the entire authority of the offices of profit to Hiram Smith. So I'm trying to discover whether or not I am crazy for making the assumption that Joseph Smith abdicated the office of prophet over to Hiram Smith as early as 1843. I stumbled upon the church video that is attempting to do damage control and which they are bearing, but they have record now that yes, we did, we did notice that somehow Hiram Smith, who we just kind of shuffle to the side of everything, we don't focus on Hiram Smith, only on the cute little 14 year old boy of Joseph Smith as being our prophet, seer, and revelator. But Hiram Smith also was a prophet. Well, they try this video that I'm going to show you, try attempts to say that they were co prophets. No. If you read further into these documents, Joseph Smith abdicated, no longer claimed to be prophet of the church. And that Hiram Smith had full authority to do everything. Now, Joseph Smith did was legally still a co-president of the church, but he abdicated his theological priesthood position all of them to Hiram Smith, who was fully in charge of the church at the time of the Smith's assassinations. And let's hear the video done by the church with all their moody kind of emotional m music trying to get you all, all verklempt and realizing that the church has a lot of damage to a lot of damage to control by their fake histories. During this period, there were two prophets. There were two presidents of the church. In accord with this calling and commandment, the prophet Joseph Smith conferred upon Hiram Smith all the keys, authority, and gifts of the priesthood which he, the prophet, held and which were formerly held by Oliver Cowdery. The Lord also revealed to Hiram Smith all that was necessary to make him completely and to the full degree a witness with his brother Joseph as a prophet, seer, revelator, and president of the church, and to stand through all time and all eternity at the head of this dispensation with his brother Joseph. A Witness for Jesus Christ President Joseph Fielding Smith Consider the significance of two joint dispensation heads. I believe this is the only time in recorded history where we have two presidents, two leaders of the church, or in this context, two prophets. Initially, it was Oliver Cowdery. He, with Joseph Smith, translated the Book of Mormon. Oliver Blah, 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 blah. The church media conglomerate believes it can make anyone believe anything they could make you believe that santa claus became the prophet of the mormon church during 1844 and it was santa claus who gave brigham young the authority to continue on the mormon church unfortunately they cannot say that so that now they're trying to do damage control and lead you to believe or lead others who don't really care to believe, oh yeah, uh, um, let's see, what is it? We had two prophets, yeah, and Joseph Smith was abdicate. No, they were two prophets. I don't know, too confusing to me. I'll just go back to sleep. Received the Aaronic priesthood jointly with Joseph Smith. He received the Melchizedek priesthood again jointly with Joseph Smith. It was Oliver Cowdery who was appointed to be the second elder of the church. It was Oliver Cowdery who, with the prophet Joseph Smith, was privileged to receive the prophetic appearance when the Lord suddenly came to his temple in Kirtland 
on April 3rd, 1836. So have I repeated it enough times for you just to go back to sleep and go, oh yes, there were always two prophets. Oliver Cowdery and Joseph Smith were the initial two prophets. And then once Oliver Cowdery was excommunicated, then we have Hiram also as a prophet. I don't get it. I thought there was only supposed to be one prophet at a time. Nope, not according to the new church history. And then they call it the new reformed church history. And we have a blonde little girl from BYU telling you what is what. So, of course, you're going to believe it. <sighs> Not me. I'm just going to go to sleep. It was Oliver Cowdery who, with the prophet Joseph Smith, jointly received keys from Moses, from Elias and Elijah again in the Kirtland Temple. And yet, despite all of these and many other incredible and overwhelming appearances, manifestations, and the bestowal of keys upon Oliver Cowdery, he stumbled. All of those blessings were taken from him and they were given to the patriarch Hiram Smith. Boy, child, and I'm, I'm just going to make this conclusion. Most of the men I meet who are devoted to the Mormon church are in love with Joseph Smith. They hold a romantic um, a romantic relationship with Joseph Smith. It is a romance between the bros, all right? It is a bro romance. Whether it's sexual, some is sexual, others may not be, but they, it's just like uh, Sir Lancelot or all the other uh, thrones and dragons and, uh, you know, Lord of the Ring kind of fantasies. Boys will be boys, and they love their little boy, Joseph Smith. This is what I have observed, and when you turn against the church, they are vehemently against Joseph Smith, even though Joseph Smith only paid part of, was only part of the problem, all right? He abdicated his entire authority to Hiram Smith, clearly one year before his own death. So... Anyway, I just thought this was fascinating and I will continue on with the research. If you like my research, please give me a thumbs up, please comment, and um, more to come. <laughs>